forward. Because even though I have this on my computer all the time, I still forget. What does it say? Record. The yellow card. Record. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> hey, good morning, Lindsay. Good morning. Is this Gabe? Yes, yes, yes. Hi, Gabe. We're here Hi with there. You. Hello, hello. Um, I'm the engineer here with Voice America. So nice to meet you. Is it? Nice to uh, meet you. Is it? How, I'm sorry. How do you pronounce that? My name. Yes. Yeah. It's Viebke. 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 Gotcha. All right. Wow. I if I butcher that. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'll let's just do a quick sound check and everything. Everything sounded good, but uh, Viebke, can you get me a uh, countdown from five, please? Yes. <laughs> Breathe in, darling. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one, zero. Awesome. Sounding great. Thank you so much. And then, Lindsay, can I grab one from you too, please? Yeah, of course. Five, four, three, two, one. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. Well, we're going to get started here in probably like the next minute or so. So I'll let you know when we get closer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings. <sighs> So if you're just joining us on the Facebook group, uh, I have this lovely, lovely bean, Vika Delks with us today, and she did this amazing drop-in for us um, and setting a prayer for this call. Mm. Yeah. I'm <laughs> do you want me to go on or do you want to go on? <laughs> oh, I feel, I feel, I'm feeling very vulnerable today because I'm not well. Um, mm. So, but I know that we are meant to be here today and that whatever happens, happens. Yes. And I'm feel very held by this lovely woman. Yeah. So, mm. and then you get to witness how we pull it together before we go live. <laughs> <laughs> I see the test, Gabe. Thank you. Mm. All right, so we've got about 30 seconds. When you guys hear the music, we are live. So have a great show. Thank you. host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff and management. Welcome to Women Thriving Unapologetically with Lindsay McCowan. Over the next hour, you will hear raw, honest, and inspiring conversation between Lindsay and her guests discussing how to thrive, live joyfully, and abundantly in spite of life's challenges. Now, here is your host, Lindsay McCowan. Welcome, everyone, to Voice America's Empowerment Channel. And today, we are live with Women Thriving Unapologetically and me, your host, Lindsay McCowan. And as you listen to that intro, um, the show is really about us women, for us women to show up and be ourselves. And part of being ourselves is being vulnerable and raw. Um, I was telling our guest right before the show, um, right before we went live, is that I was feeling very vulnerable today and um, very much raw um, because I'm not feeling 100% myself today. And yesterday was an incredibly challenging day where I pushed myself way too hard. And with that, I woke up with a migraine and, you know, this is a live show. So <laughs> we got to show up. Um, and sometimes we have to show up, um, and be tender with ourselves and allow ourselves to be vulnerable. Um, and with that, I feel so blessed to have our guest today, um, with me because she has this incredible ability to hold space with her tenderness, with her beauty and her ability to really bring in some magical support. Um, and usually what we do is I, I, lead us in a little drop in and connecting to our breath. But I would love if we started today instead with me just introducing our guest 
and allowing her maybe if she's willing to do a little drop in for us, just maybe, you know, one minute connection to our breath, because she has such a beautiful way of doing that. And she did it for me today, which was really touching. So with the, I didn't ask her for permission for that beforehand, but <laughs> I know she's just amazing. And she'll be, she, I know she'll step in. Um, but today's guest is Vika Dilks, and she is a German change and resilience coach and certified Wim Hof instructor. She has been coaching people in the environmental protection, politics, the corporate world, and sports, all the way up to extreme and Olympic sports, with her expertise as a landscape ecologist, life coach, lecturer, and business instructor. She has been creating unique workshops based on ecology, nature psychology, and coaching techniques, as well as biohacking. Her mission is to help people master and just master change and challenges with grace. Can you imagine that? You know, we all have challenges, but be, to be able to master that with grace would be phenomenal. And she has part of her mission is to allow ourselves to grow into the best versions of ourselves. And for Vipka, she calls herself the stress ecologist, which we're going to hear more about what that means. And also how to she's really embraced how change is part of our lifestyle. For example, she taught her, can get this, she taught herself Italian. This is not her natural language, <laughs> her first language, but she taught herself Italian so that she could become a radio co-host in Italy where her 18 year old son was born. So from an excellent university diploma and leadership positions in the corporate world, she, she fell into three burnouts, three burnouts, and found her own creative path out of childhood trauma, burnout, and long COVID syndrome. So I'm so blessed to have Vipka Dilks here today with us all the way from Germany. Hi, Vipka, again. <laughs> welcome. Hello, welcome. See. Mm, this just sounded so beautiful. And um, I totally agree with you that it's um, the be most beautiful way to start a conversation is um, to breathe together because um, we live such frenetic lives in these days, you know, over the world, all over the world. And it's, um, we are so close, you know, um, I'm, my body physically is in uh, Germany at the moment. A few years ago, I've been living in Italy, but I have always been connected to people from the US, from the UK, uh, Germany, Italy, and other countries too. So the truth in my feeling is what Native Americans have been saying for thousands and thousands of years, uh, that we are all connected and uh, that everything is connected connected you know like we are um living in a global ecosystem and our inner ecosystem um reacts astonishingly to our breath so mm. what you could do if you like and um maybe even the beautiful stuff at voice america who just helped us with uh the tech check and our lovely audience listening to this um, is to put one hand, maybe the left hand, the so-called female hand or the right hand on your heart, on your chest. And uh, just feel into your breath and uh, feel into what is doing the breath right now without judging and without wanting to change it. And what that does for us um, has been under scientific observance already, putting our hands on our heart, on our chest, our physical heart, heart is already calming us. And um, also checking in, observing ourselves, our mind, our emotions, our breath, our feelings will calm us within seconds within just a few minutes. So hmm. in my feeling right now, the most powerful thing is not to do a stunning breathing technique right now and to change ourselves again to be better or to be better off, but to acknowledge that we are already 
wonderful, amazing beings and mm -hmm. not to judge ourselves, but just to witness all the beauty and all the amazingness that there is already. Mm -hmm. ah, I don't know about everyone else that's listening, but <laughs> I definitely needed that. Oh, and just that simple, simple act of placing your hand, like my hand on my heart, just immediately help calm some, like my hands are actually shaking this morning and to put my hand on my heart actually helped steady the shaking in my hands and to calm some of the, the nervousness and the, the vulnerability of um, showing up live when you know, I don't want to disappoint my listeners or disappoint you um, because I'm not feeling like on point, but just to show up the way we are and not forcing ourselves to be anything than what we are in this moment, just help me relax and give myself permission just to be here and trust that everything's divine and everything is going to flow the way that needs to flow. So thank you so much for that, Deepa. I really, really appreciate that. Um, yeah. So maybe now I can move forward without breaking into tears, but if I do, I do. <laughs> I'll just, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm totally fine with you breaking into tears or me or our listeners, because um, what I learned is that in our tears, there are stress hormones or at least stressful substances. So it's a natural uh, reaction for, of our body to rid uh, ourselves of stressful stuff inside of us. So mm. crying is really very good. And uh, you mentioned that before you spoke about vulnerability and I feel very vulnerable too today because um, I come out of a really devastating end of a love affair and my brother's death just six weeks ago. And what I learned from the wonderful Brené Brown, the American uh, social uh, researcher, social science researcher, and I think Harvard or Oxford professor, is that there is no connection without vulnerability. Mm. Yes, there is no connection without vulnerability. And we're so afraid to be vulnerable because we, I think in our society, we view it as weakness, but it actually, in that ability to connect through our vulnerability, we build and strengthen our bonds and we become stronger because of that. Yeah, you know what? I, I have been feeling scared about my vulnerability in these days. Uh, and it seems to me that the part of us that is scared is not our core, but the part of us is scared when we are vulnerable. Feel It feels to me is maybe a part of our ego, the part who wants to keep up the construction that we have constructed around us, you know, our persona, the person we want to show to the world. Because it seems to me that our soul, our psyche, our true self is like gold and you can throw at gold whatever you want and then you can rinse it with water and gold will be, will be gold again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and that feels so true to me. This idea that the fear is is coming to be vulnerable is not coming from our our true authentic selves. It's coming from this need to control this you know outer appearance that we've created about who we are or who we think we should be or who we think other people want us to be or think that we are. Um, and also the the ideas that we're are placed on us by our culture, our society and saying, okay, this is who you need to be. You have to be strong. You can't show weakness weak, um, or, um, or show your underbelly or you're going to get hurt, you know? And so, but that's just another construct of our social conditioning and of the mind, which is not actually in alignment with our heart. And so I'd love to get into, do you have anything to say on that? Cause I can sense that there's something that, that I can do before I go on. <laughs> we are so connected. You see? Yeah. yeah in fact, um, 
I remember that um, some days ago when we had another uh, Zoom call, just a private one, we spoke about the book uh, Women, Women Who Run With the Wolves by Clarissa Pinkola Estes. And I think one of the first fairy tales or yeah, empowering tales she analyzes in the beginning of the book is about Bluebeard. And this guy called Bluebeard, he is really dangerous. And she speaks about the fact that human beings have to learn to listen to the voice of their own instinct to protect us from true danger. So it is important, in fact, that we uh, understand where there is true danger in the world uh, or where there are decisions that we shouldn't take uh, because they would be harmful for ourselves or for others. But um, we live in this modern society very often in a fake stress, in a fake fear. And I remember that uh, a theologist said in the Bible, there is said about 350 or more times, don't be afraid, don't mm. have fear, because fear brings down our neocortex, brings down our capacity to, to think and to make good decisions because we go then into fight flight mode, into the limbic and the, into the reptilian brain. So fear, if it comes from our true you know, instinct telling us what is dangerous is good, but the, the, um, the habit to live a stressful life in fear makes us stupid, literally. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say that it makes us feeble-minded. So yeah, all of that stress, it shuts down our, our brains and keeps us in that primal state. Um, and if we can relax and release and surrender that need to control, um, because we're afraid if we don't control, then life is going to fall apart. That what happens is that we open up and expand into other realms and we can pull from new information um, which is really what we want anyways. Right. Um, so, you know, you have so much to offer and, uh, I don't even know what question to go to next, but, you know, you started out as, you know, with a degree in ecology and you had a pull to go in a different direction. And I'm just curious, you know, you, you went into the direction of life coaching and, as well as a Wim Hof instructor, which is not something that is, um, you don't see as many female Wim Hof instructors out there. And I'm just curious, like, you know, you didn't, you know, you overcame certain fears that you had to let go of in order to follow that inner guidance to a new path. And I'm just curious how you did that and what guided you to be, you know, a life coach. Yeah, I was uh, still very young when I when I uh, was studying uh, landscape ecology at Hanover University, and that was a very intellectual world. And um, I was licking my wounds um, from childhood trauma because I love my dad and my mom very much, and we are we are very close now. But they have been. Um, hurt very much uh, by their own childhood uh, during World War II in Germany. So their first, their baby years and um, kindergarten years uh, didn't exist, but it were years in um, basements and bombs fell on their houses. So they couldn't really heal that. And uh, it was quite a violent household at my home for many, many years for my brother and I. So when I studied at university, um, I had the possibility to do a workshop, um, which was called Female Energy Workshop. And it was led by a Native American woman and another woman who had been living in a, with Native American people for more than 20 years. And I asked, will there be men? And my friend said, no, 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 there won't be men. You're safe, you can go there. Because I was scared of men at that age because my father had been so, so violent at home. And uh, my workshop changed the course of my life um, from this intellectual background of university and me um, being uh, very decisive to, to wanting to, to thrive there. I fell into this 
these lovely arms of Native American women and who taught me about how to communicate with uh, the soul of trees. And um, that the moon time, the time when women menstruate is, is, um, is not something to hide what I learned at home, but it, it's, it's sacred, it's empowerment for women. And that the body is not something um, to hide or something less than, but the body is as sacred as our mind or our feelings or our spirituality. So from that moment on, I started to live in two worlds. One world was the intellectual world of science and the other world was spirituality and um, a connection to mama earth, to my own body, to other people through this other tradition, this very old tradition. Mm, beautiful. <laughs> oh, okay. I have so many questions on this um, and we have one minute to break. So I'm like, okay, what can we talk about in one minute and bridge to the next um the next segment. And so what I'd love to talk about is, um, how you hold that, you know, one foot in the science and one foot in, you know, nature in the spiritual realm and be able to kind of not feel like one is right and the other is wrong, but, but be able to see how they both are interconnected and can support one another and support us and a modern um, and modern living and with all the thing of the stress and the vulnerabilities that we're feeling. So um, can we talk about that when we come back to break, come from break? Yeah. Okay. It's a beautiful okay. question. Okay. So um, with that, everyone, we are going to go to break, but please stay where you are and stay tuned in um, because we are talking with Vika Dilks all the way from Germany and sharing about how we can really navigate changes in life and be okay with being vulnerable and raw and know that um, we have the resilience within us to, and the strength to pull from those vulnerabilities. So we'll be right back after this break. So are we, are we still with our lovely peeps from Facebook right now, or are, are they in the break too? No, they, they're with us. They're with us the whole time. They get to watch behind us. Oh, okay. So if you don't mind, I would invite them to do another little exercise so we could use the break, break for that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we started with this gesture to put our hand on our heart and our chest. And uh, if you like, you can go on with that and feel into your heart again. And you may or may not feel your heartbeat, but you will feel the warmth of your own body. And you may realize how wonderful your own skin feels, if there are wrinkles on that skin or not, if it's sun tanned or not, but it's warm, it's tender, it's soft. And it's so wonderful for another human being to snuggle in with you and to be able to touch your skin or to be touched by your skin. Isn't that already a, a miracle in itself? So please remember all the times when somebody touched your hand mm. or your cheek <laughs> or your hair or when you just touched your dog or a cat or a child, or your old mama. <laughs> and even if your mom and dad or your old aunt did have mental problems, they would still feel the warmth of your warm hand and your touch. And you may want to feel the gratitude of the miracle of what we may share on planet Earth no matter what conditions we are in. And if you are alone at home in this moment, you can touch yourself, you can touch your heart and Sorry. your heart will feel that. Interrupt, uh, we're coming back in about, we're coming right back. Okay. Just in time. <laughs> uh. 
You are listening to Women Thriving Unapologetically with Lindsay McCowan. Have a question for Lindsay or her guests? Want to share your story? Email Lindsay at thrivingunapologetically at gmail.com. That's thrivingunapologetically at gmail.com. Now back to the show. Here again is Lindsay. Welcome back, everyone, to Women Thriving Unapologetically and me, your host, Lindsay McCowan. I am joined today by uh, with Deepka Dilks, and she is a stress ecologist, a Wim Hof instructor, a life coach, and just an amazing human being. And before the break, we were talking about the, the strength that comes through being raw and vulnerable, and also Deepka's journey from her studies in landscape ecology at Hanover University and how she started to be guided to delve into more spiritual practices and how be having one foot in the science and one foot in the spirit realm is actually really a, a gift and a blessing to all of us and how, and she's going to talk to us how we can bridge that and not, and know that one is not better than the other or wrong or right. Um, so Vipka, welcome back. Thank you, Lindsay. <laughs> also for your lovely question. Um, yeah, I remember that when we had, um, when we had those um, outdoor exercises at university to study plants, to do botanics, geobotanics, ecolog ecological, um, ecologically um, looking at plants and plant communities and how they grow together, that the assistants of the professors would tear down leaves from the, from the trees and they would make jokes about people who think that plants can feel something, you know? They, so that was really tough for me that a day before, maybe on Sunday, I was around Native American people who taught us to pick nettles in a respectful way. So we asked the grandmother or grandfather nettle, the plant that um, founded the place with the nettles in a specific spot. We would ask them for permission to pick some of the smaller plants, some of the smaller leaves. And then only after getting a yes, we would collect them with respect and gratitude. Mm. And then the next day, there would be somebody uh, acting so rude and disrespectful to the natural world or the other beings in the natural world that was uh, difficult. And today, um, I can live with that. I believe the truth is very individual, you know, um, it's... Um, I can read a scientific article by a very famous professor <laughs> and if it doesn't resonate with me or if it doesn't sound true with me, I take the right to listen to myself and to see, okay, maybe this doesn't apply to my life or maybe it's not relevant, relevant for me in this period of time in my life. And uh, I have given lectures at a state academy about scientific work. So how do you work correctly? What are scientific methods? And there are people doing research on people in the academic and scientific work world about deceit and betraying in their PhD public publications, in their diplomas, because there's so much betrayal and deceit in the scientific world. Mm. And I still love science because imagine we, we hadn't had people who were on honest um, scientists who really wanted to find out the truth. Where would we be? How would our housing be today? Would we have boats and cars and bicycles if there wouldn't have been honest people doing science in the honest way? But on the other hand, there's a lot of rubbish also, because there are also people in the scientific world, and there's a lot of science about that, <laughs> who don't tell us the truth. So what I learned at age 21 from Beth, the one who came from the United States to Germany, she said, the truth is in your body. Mm. So we have this wisdom at hand, always. And we can, we can reclaim the right to judge ourselves, what we want to believe, what we want to apply and what we don't want to take in. And that's so powerful. And I also want to say that even in the spiritual, um, you know, world, 
that there's a lot of mistrust and untruths happening. I mean, I experienced that with a recent teacher who was not honest with his students and, um, and it felt like a little bit of a betrayal that was happening there. So it, it happens on, in both, um, the mm-hmm. scientific world and the, and these spiritual groups. Um, and so it's so important that we understand what the truth is for us, because when that, that trust was broken for me in the spiritual, um, in my spiritual sangha, I, um, which just means community in Sanskrit that I had done enough of my inner work that I was able to be clearly, um, sit with what was happening and not react and know that my truth was that, Oh, I felt free to, and I didn't feel bound to this person. I didn't, I didn't have rage. I didn't have all these really unhealthy reactions to what was happening. I was able just to sit there and be with what was happening and decide for myself what the truth was without being pulled into all the chaos of everyone else's emotions and anger and frustrations and really, really intense feelings. And so I'd love to hear from you like, okay, because I have a lot of people that come to me like, this is my truth. And they're, and they're raging and they have really strong ideologies and how do we honor that that's their truth in that moment, but also guide them to a place where, okay, the truth that you're feeling right now is covered with all these veils of pain and um, conditioning and woundedness. How do we guide them to a place where they're willing to even start to remove some of those veils that they can see that the deeper truth that lies underneath that um because we can feel so strongly in this moment that this is my truth this is my truth this is my truth and yet it's coming through that truth is just dripping with pain and fear and uncertainty and past wounds that's a big question yeah i i love the question and i can very much relate to it because uh in my own family i have people who are um based in um evangelic evangelical churches which is a very fundamentalistic branch of christianity and um my father is a lay priest um um in a German uh, German speaking radio station and he's uh, when he's preaching about 300,000 and more people are listening. So he believes in the Bible literally, you know, he believes that the Bible talks to us and every word is true and it's literally true. And uh, so for decades, uh, we were having a d- difficult time when we met because Um, He had this order, as he understands it from the Bible, to convert me into an evangelical Christian. And I am a person who believes in a one benevolent good being in this universe, but I'm not walking a specific religious path. Um, I'm sharing religious ceremonies with people from different cultures and different religions. And I very much believe that to live in a good democracy, it's important that people have um, the right to live the religion they want to live in and to to practice it, you know, if they don't, don't harm other people. But then my father got very, very ill with an autoimmune disease for many, many years. And he's paralyzed now. He can hardly move his hands, nothing else. And he has been so open for inner growth and um, has been so humbled by the experience of this disease that it's possible now to speak about things. And he is, has started again to listen to me and we can share. But the wanting to listen um, has to come from the other person. If I... I mean, I can't get through with what I believe to be true or what I offer from my authentic truth or my inner feelings or what I have experienced. But if I have another person sitting in front of me who is not interested in my truth, um, it's impossible to reach out to them. Well, I'd say impossible, but I, I believe there's something that is always possible and that is love is still the answer. I can always 
love the other person. I can love them in where they are. I can love them also in what you mentioned, their pain. I can love them as a coach when I see that their trauma is screaming to me through their voice, their gestures, their mimic. And people who are experienced in coaching or psychotherapy uh, were colleagues of us, Lindsay. They were maybe also recognized that in my voice today, in my body, in my gestures today, that I'm at a very raw and vulnerable point, that I'm uh, still in a res stress response to traumatic uh, experiences. And still then, I believe the best we can do for each other and for ourselves is to love them and to love ourselves. Yes, that's so, it's so beautiful. And it, it's so some, it sounds so simple and but yet I don't want people to feel like in its simplicity that it's not powerful um, because it's not about changing someone or changing their beliefs. It's about loving them and holding that space for them to be where they are and believe what they're believing in that moment, but also create the, the space for them when they're willing to do some of that that deeper inner work so that they can, in my opinion, find freedom from the strong, intense reactions that come from the wounding, not from the necessarily the belief itself. Cause sometimes the beliefs are just, you know, ideas in our head and, but they, if they have, they're always associated with a certain emotion, but if that emotion is really intense. Sometimes I tell my clients that, that well, let's look at that because that intense, if, it, if you're having that much of a reaction to someone else's belief, then perhaps there's something underneath all of that, that is tied to your own wounding. And if we can free, like heal that wound, then you can be truly free to believe whatever you want to believe, but not be so reactionary to other people's beliefs. If they don't believe what the same thing that you do and you can be more mm -hmm. open and loving and compassionate for other people. I mean, that's my take on it, but. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I love that. And to me, it, it comes to mind the two words, um, resistance and resilience. I mean, resilience can be translated to life fitness, to, to thrive and heal in life, um, even when crises or challenges happen. And um, in my experience and understanding uh, resistance is the enemy of resilience so when you resist another person's opinion um, it will feel exhausting for yourself it might bring up fears just as you mentioned in yourself it might trigger all wounds in yourself but it will also do that with the other person the other person will try even more to convince you of their own opinion right when when they feel oh there's somebody resisting my opinion but um, if I go, just as you said, and, and, and hold space and uh, tell to the other person, do I understand it right? You mean that, for example, uh, in the Bible, what my father, for example, believes, he's frightened because, the, because of the apocalypse, because he thinks we are in a time that Native American nations call, for example, the, uh, the fifth um, the fifth time or the fifth era or something like that. So he's frightened about that. And if I would tell him, no, you're wrong, he would even more have to try to convince me and he would suffer in his fear, in his fear for himself, his family, for me. So what I find better is to say, tell me more. So you're frightened. I can see you're frightened. Tell me more. So he tells me, okay, I'm frightened. My money won't be enough in this period of time. Or um, that in Germany, um, when we won't have enough gas to heat our homes this winter because of the fight with Putin, that I will be in the cold like I was as a little boy in Second World War. Mm. So if I tell him, no, you're wrong, I'm convinced this won't be like that, it won't help. But if I tell him, oh, yeah, I get it, I get it. I remember that you told me that the windows were frozen from the inside, you know, when he was a kid and he was always hungry. So the cold and the hunger together, that was scary. I understand you, I get it. And so I, I hope everyone's really listening to this because it's when we push against other people's beliefs, we create that resistance 
and and it exhausts us and it exhausts the other person. And then we're, when we're exhausted, we don't have the capacity to truly listen. But if we take that time, it's like, tell me more. I really want to understand. And we can just start to really thread it out. You can see, oh, you have so much, this fear is like real to you because you've experienced, had these experiences in your life that are very real and true to you. And now I can have some compassion for you because of how, how vulnerable it makes you feel really at the, at the very root of it, you feel vulnerable there. And I know what it feels like to feel vulnerable and there I can connect to you. Um, and then that's that shared platform where we can stand together and we can stand together stronger and more resilient, but not have to have the exact same beliefs because we're not, there's, it's impossible for everyone on this planet to have the same beliefs, but how can we find the common, the common thread that we can share so that we can have more love and compassion? Because if we have that, can you imagine if everyone was having some love and compassion for every other person, what, how that would actually change the dynamics of our world, our inner world and our outer world. So Oh, I think that was so good. I yes, so you amen. Together. <laughs> that was just so, such a, so beautiful. Um, so we're coming up. I cannot believe it. this always happens with every single guest, but especially with you, like we, the, the time just flies by, but we are um, coming up onto our last break of the show, but I hope that you'll stay tuned because we haven't even gotten around to ask. I want to ask you about um what drew you to be a, a Wim Hof instructor? Um, because I know that you didn't like the cold. So <laughs> and I don't like the cold. So and I've always been curious with my migraines, how the cold would help. So I want to hear more about this. So my friends stay tuned and we'll be right back with Beep Delts right after this. Yeah. All right, so all clear. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I can tell to our lovely Facebook audience already that the migraine definitely uh, the Wim Hof method definitely helps with migraines. I've experienced that for myself. And I haven't had one in um, quite some time. I changed my, my diet some and it helped tremendously. And I was reducing a lot of my stress, but the past couple of weeks I've allowed the, the, the pushing Lindsay to come out and mm -hmm. um, I'm starting to feel that there it is. You know, when I push too hard, um, and I can even feel the heat in my body rising mm -hmm. from it. So, and even when I, this morning I was like, Oh, maybe I should, I was like, I know I'm going to be talking to Vipka. Maybe I should get in that shower and just put some cold water. on. <laughs> <laughs> I had my cold shower this morning, which uh, was good. Well, for me, it's like, I, I love the, the coolness on my head. Mm -hmm my hands and my feet and it's intensely painful. Mm -hmm. so I always say if someone could just hold me by my hands, my feet and dunk my head, my body in. Mm -hmm. I'd be good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's, that's very normal and natural because, um, our, um, our arteries are like little muscles. They are, they are indeed muscles, round muscles, like tubes. And if you don't practice the cold, um, like our ancestors did, you know, they, they often had to do with the cold because even when you live in a hut or in a teepee, even in summer, the night gets get fresh and um, they would fish and be in contact with cold water, even in summer, you know? So these little uh, tubes, these little mu muscles of our arteries, they were always practiced and exercised and then they wouldn't hurt. So mm -hmm. when you start to practice with the cold, everyone will experience an uncomfortable feeling or even pain in their hands and feet. It's all normal and nothing unhealthy. And if you keep practicing, then we'll get better. Okay. Well, we uh -huh. Do you like that? that? We're going to have to share that when we come back to the-, the, the Okay, yeah. whatever you like. Yeah, we're coming right back. Thank you, Gabe. You are listening to Women Thriving Unapologetically with Lindsay McCowan. Have a question for Lindsay or her guests? Want to share your story? Email Lindsay at thrivingunapologetically at gmail.com. That's thrivingunapologetically at gmail.com. 
Now back to the show. Here again is Lindsay. Welcome back, everyone, to Women Thriving Unapologetically. I am Lindsay McCowan, and I am here today with Deepka Dilks. And I'm so excited to talk about this next talk. We've been talking about so many amazing things already, but um, I am, I do want to make time to talk to you about um, how you came to be a Wim Hof instructor, because there's a lot of women that are practicing his methods, but most of the instructors seem to be men. Um, So what really drew you to become an instructor? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I was in 2019 and I still hadn't full recovered from my last burnout. And it was not just, you know, burnout, like saying I was tired, but it was diagnosed and I, I had to quit a job because I, I had to lie in bed for more than six weeks and I couldn't just stand up. It was really scary. And I hadn't come back full to my legendary energy. People who worked with me always said I was like an energy explosion. I had so much energy, so much life force and um, power that I could give into my work. And um, so I Googled energy, (laughs) build up energy again, life energy, stuff like that. And I stumbled over um, a video, a YouTube video with uh, Wim Hof or about the Wim Hof method. And it struck me. Um, and you have to know that I, I have even um, um, emigrated to Italy from the German Black Forest region because it's quite cold over there uh, in the Black Forest. Uh, and I went to Italy because I hated the cold. Uh, and I slept, even in Italy, I slept under a, a big blanket and I had woolen socks on and a hot water bottle. <laughs> So um, my mind was going like really cold, really ice bath. Um, But my instinct, my intuition said, um, this is it. And then I watched the second YouTube video about the Wim Hof method. And there was this voice inside of me saying, I want this. I want it at every cost, at any cost. And I was like, really? Are you serious? (laughs) So I informed myself and I started the, the first free program with the Wim Hof method and cold showers. And the first full cold shower was as if somebody was beating me on my, on my back. I hated it, but I felt this is it. This is, and that was irrational. You know, it was my soul talking to me. So on the last day of 2019, I said, okay, or I'm fully in, or I won't do it. So I booked the Wim Hof instructor training and it costs a few euros. So I booked that before I did my first ice bath. <laughs> you wanted to make sure that you're like going to yes. do it. Yeah. I get, I get that. I've invested the money, so I have to do it now. Yes. Yes. And um, yeah, already in the first uh, three months in whip still in winter, um, my big winter blanket left the bed and I had to put in the, the summer blankets. I had to sleep with an open window. Um, the woolen socks left my bed and the warm water bottle and I started to sleep naked <laughs> because my whole metabolism changed from a girl who always felt cold to um, a 50 year old woman who um, felt very well in winter time and who started to enjoy winter. <laughs> And the, and the, the warmth was not coming from menopausal symptoms. It was coming from, because your metabolism, because I just want to highlight that. Cause you know, I'm, it's, you know, we're, we're both, we're some almost the same age. And yes. a lot of people are like, oh, I'm stripping off my clothes in the middle of the night. Cause I'm hot. But this is because your metabolism is actually being able is more regulated and able to come back into uh, what sounds like a more natural state. Yes, absolutely. And I have to, I can compare that because for me, um, the hot flashes and everything, and um, that came a few years ago already for me, quite early. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I had discussed that with my gynecologist and had learned a lot about that and took my plant based medicine for that. And it had disappeared um, when I dove into the Wim Hof method. And so I see clearly the effects of how, how regularly I take my cold showers and do my ice baths um, and the effect on how I react to the cold. And um, yeah, my body is like, it's well-practiced 
um, to adapt to temperature, you know? And so, you know, bef- during the break, we were talking because, you know, um, I was telling Vipka that, you know, with these headaches and migraines that I sometimes get, um, it, I feel like all this heat is in my body and I love to have my, um, cold compress on my head or have my head in cold water, but the rest of my body does not like it. And I was saying, Oh, if someone could just hold me by my feet, um, mm-hmm. and my wrist and just dunk my body and my head in the water, cold <laughs> water, I would be happy because I get this intense pain in my fingertips and my, um, my toe tips. Um, whenever I'm in cold water, I can't, I can't handle it. And, um, you had a, you explained it to me so well. So I hope you can just tell, tell the audience what you told me. Yeah, it's lovely because, you know, when you start to practice with the cold, I call it cold play, you know, um, there's so much into it for everybody who is living in a climate zone where you have cold, a cold season and a warm season. Um, it, it's so much expense, um, your comfort zone when you practice with the cold. So if when you start, for example, to take first a warm shower and then a few seconds of a cold shower, maybe you start even only with your legs or with your hands and arms, you may experience that your hands and feet feel uncomfortable. And that's due to the fact that um, our arteries are muscles. They are round muscles like tubes and they will contract. It's called vasocontraction vasocontraction, sorry, vasocontraction, and they will dilate, they will expand again after the the cold hits you, which is called vasodilation scientifically. So that's a natural process. And you know what happens when you don't go to the gym and don't practice your, your long muscles of your legs, for example, or your back. They will get lazy and the same thing happens to those muscles uh, which are around our arteries or part of our arteries when you don't practice uh, the cold and always live in a lukewarm um, lukewarm condition um, they will get lazy and they will hurt a bit when you start practicing again but that will get better so what i really uh, tell people is to to do their cold play to practice with the cold um, and start slowly like you take your warm shower And then you go to cold and just start with your legs and arms. And then you extend the body regions where you you practice the cold play. And then you extend the time. And it's when you arrive at 30 seconds of a cold shower, this is already enough to have the so-called cold thermogenesis and all the good stuff that comes from the from the cold, um, which helps your immune system, which boosts your uh, dopamine levels uh, to 250% higher levels and will give you good mood and also will help you with uh, migraines. But the showers are not the the perfect thing for me with the migraines, but the cold bath is something which which knocks out the migraine within seconds. (laughs) Okay, it knocks the migraine out within (laughs) seconds. That's that's worth, that is worth, so worth starting to play with the cold and I've never liked the cold at all. And so, um, I find because I'm in a region where we have four seasons, I really feel like three out of those four are cold. Mm -hmm. And so it would be nice to be able to say, Hey, you know, actually spring isn't so cold. Fall isn't so cold. And cause once fall gets here, I'm just dreading winter. I'm like, it's just the beginning of the end for me. Um, but it'd be, nice to be, cause I love, I also love nature. It'd be nice to be out there and be like really being able to enjoy it and not, um, and be able to acclimate it. And this all really beautifully ties into how it can support us and having more resilience. You know, we've talked about how we can have more resilience around our, our, our beliefs and our ability to be compassionate with other people. And how can we find this resilience in our bodies as well? Um, and how have you, so you've said it helped also with migraines, but um, what else has it helped you with? Um, it helped me also with trauma and not only the last burnout um, that was in uh, 2017, but when I went to Poland this uh, spring to do the master module of the Wim Hof uh, instructor training, um, we did these really tough cold dips because obviously as Wim Hof instructors, they want to bring us to our limits so that we know how does the 
body react to too much cold. So that we, we, we have to know the symptoms to guide people safely. And uh, we take people into cold baths of a maximum of two minutes at the beginning. But at Poland, we had to do 10 minutes. That was part of the, <laughs> of the training. And when I take people into, cold, uh, into an ice bath, it will have maybe six degrees Celsius. In Poland, it was zero degrees because there were huge ice blocks in those pools um, uh, below the waterfalls uh, in, in these mountains. Um, and, uh, and at one of these exercises, when we were working towards it, I really got scared, really, really deep inside. And I felt there was some trauma triggered, some old fears. And I went to Emma Estrella, who is one of the, the instructor instructors <laughs> in the master module. Um, and she guided me to this ice bath we were walking to so that I could deal with the old trauma, trauma that was coming up, triggered by the fear of the cold. Mm. So that was not only the only, uh, only time that the cold helped me to, to get access to something which was hidden inside of me deep down. But you know, the things, the stuff that is hidden inside deep down, which is not accessible, it's like carrots without leaves. They are down there in the earth, but it's very hard to find them. But when you pull them up, um, sorry, there's, um, was just what, what's it called coming in um when you pull up this carrot it turns out to be sweet instead of bad or scary or something so i love that that you know one and it's out and it it also brought up this this belief this fear of the cold which seems so tied to your father's fear of the cold and how there might be mm. some even some intergenerational stuff there and so wow. in doing this you're actually able to clear up some of that stuff that was tied to your father perhaps i don't know i'm just you know throwing that out there. And then also your own fear and able to be free from that. So doing, you know, bringing our bodies into a controlled stress environment, whether that's through coaching or through the Wim Hof methods or through yoga or breath work, we're able to process a lot of these, these beliefs um, that really do hold us back from living a more fulfilling life. Um, and I cannot even, can you believe that we are at the end of the show? There's so much more to say. <laughs> But what I do want to say is thank you so much for showing up today with your whole self and for helping me ground because I did show up to the show in tears and feeling very raw and vulnerable. And you've been able to hold that space for me to show up for everyone else and for myself and for you. And so if anyone wants to reach out to Vika, um, you can find her on her website at change-guide.com. And she's also on Instagram at change underscore guide. And she's so amazing. And I would highly recommend reaching out to her. And we are actually, you know, in the beginning stages of seeing how we might be able to collaborate. So definitely um, stay tuned and we'll have something to share hopefully in the near future. And for all of you that are listening, we're sending you so much love and knowing that you can really, truly break free from a lot of the past conditionings and live in a more empowered, loving and compassionate place. And so join us every week here on Voice America's Empowerment Channel to learn more about how you can do that on Women Thriving Unapologetically, live every Thursday, 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern. And please remember to review, rate, and subscribe if you're listening to the replay. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Much love. Much love. <laughs> All right, we're all clear. Thank you, Gabe. No problem, Lindsay. Yeah, I will talk to you next time. But okay. You guys have a great rest of your day. Take care. Okay. Thank, well. thank you so much, Gabe. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Okay, so I'm just going to let's see if we can jump over to the Facebook group. See if anyone's there. If you're yes. okay with that, I'd love to do that. And I'm always like, how do I do this? Oh. You did great. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you because you helped so much with that. Um, helps if I get to the right uh, Facebook group. Okay, here we go. Okay, so yay. Let's see here. 
Okay, so um, I don't see any questions in the, the comment feed right now, but if there's anything that you want to add that we didn't get a chance to talk about, I mean, we had this list of questions here and I don't even know if we got to, I mean, we kind of bounced around, but um, I love how it's so easy to talk to you and um, just allow ourselves to be guided in the conversation. But Vika, did you have anything else that you wanted to share with our community? Yeah, it's, what is what's coming up spontaneously when you ask that question is that now with um, the challenges of the pandemic and the war between Russia and Ukraine and all the other things we are facing, all the the changed laws recently in the U.S. Um, that our default reaction often is to go into resistance and to go into the male energy inside of us, like pushing through, doing, doing more less sleep, less pauses. But what I experience is that uh, that's counterproductive. Um, we are not at our wisest, wisest place inside, mentally and emotionally, when we go into the fight flight and the default mode of the tradition of patriarchal cultures, like doing, 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 um, referring only to things with the rational mind. but the most holistic path in my experience is to to bring the whole team to the table like to bring yes a wonderful beautiful brain and mind but to take enough breaks also during the day like doing a siesta which is a very wise thing to do as well for our brain but also for our heart health and uh, nervous system health to respond instead of react to what challenges are coming up towards us does that make sense, Lindsay? Yes, it makes total sense. Although I didn't do it yesterday. Um, <laughs> hence, hence the headache today and the uh, feelings of overwhelm. Um, but yeah, it makes total sense, especially if, you know, if we really want to, to shift into a new way of being, we have to do things differently, right? We have to, we really have to pay attention to what is, for example, for me, like yesterday, I was pushing myself. I had so much to do. And like, uh, as an entrepreneur, it's like a solo entrepreneur. I'm like, okay, I have this long list and I wasn't, I just could not get it done. And there were so many important things that needed to get done. And I could feel myself just pushing so hard. And, you know, as I also, as a creative, I was just like, I'm trying to force content and it was just not, and I'm like, that is not what that is, and I knew like I teach about the divine feminine I'm like I am not moving from this place right now and I got to a point where I was like I just have to stop I could tell the the toxicity of it I could feel it in my body um but I didn't pull myself back soon enough because what happened is I woke up feeling extremely nauseous like I said said earlier in the show my hands were shaking this headache and all the emotions that come from that um and I was like, wow, okay, I did it again. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I didn't beat myself up for it, which I would have been an old habit, which is also toxic mascul masculinity, like distorted. Like when we, you know, we're so afraid of other people judging us or criticizing us, but then we turn that in on ourselves. And that's um, when we know that that's a toxic masculine approach. Um, so, and my approach to my business now is what I'm playing with is how can I do this in a way that is more in line with the divine when everything we've been taught is about doing business from a masculine approach. Mm -hmm. And so my mind is so rooted in to the, the masculine way of doing things. And yet my heart is like, no, we're trying to guide you into this new way of doing things. And yet there's no good guidelines yet for that. Because every time you like, you know, find a coach or, uh, I mean, I have a, I have a great coach right now, but I've had other coaches, which it's just too masculine in their approach. And then, mm -hmm. and then, you know, pushing me to do more and, and, you know, get the content out there three times to post every day and blah, 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 all this stuff. And I'm like, mm -hmm. it doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel good. It feels like I'm again, pushing. So I'm curious to understand how we can learn how to move in this more feminine way um, when we don't really have a lot of guidance around that. 
Mm-hmm. I'm assuming we have to tap into some inter- inner guidance. <laughs> yeah, I love I love the point you're making. And um, the first thing I want to say to all the women and all the men who are listening to us and to, to ourselves, to myself too, to remind myself is we are living in an, in an incredible new time where we are building democracies. We have only been doing that for a few centuries, you know, and due to the latest research in archaeology, I think in, uh, in Northern Africa, what they found there, the archaeological sites, um, the um, Homo sapiens has been around for only f- for 400,000 years. But only for two or three centuries, we have starting to build those modern democracies. So we have been living in patriarchal systems for such a long, long time here in in Europe and also in in the United States. So we are pioneers. We are like the the Europeans who moved to um, the new continent, you know, to, uh, to North America and South America. We are real pioneers and I'm getting goosebumps, truth bumps saying that. And we often forget, we are often so hard and harsh on ourselves. And um, we don't acknowledge that we are building those new societies, men and women together, fair societies uh, where people can live together in peace and in love and with respect in diversity also. So it will take time to build all this good stuff. And on the practical level, what I am starting to do these days really to uh, live an inspired day, to work in an inspired way and not from the egoic self, from the mind, which is not sustainable. It has not been sustainable in my life. Um, is that I make a sandwich. That's what Michael Sandler called it. I, I listened to Michael Sandler Inspire Nation a, a couple of days ago. It's a sandwich of doing the thing which brings you in the good space in the morning and in the evening. I mean, Tony Robbins, Robbins teaches that too. He does that in the morning very intensely. And I've been um, studying and learning with Tony Robbins and I love him, I admire him. him. And I need for me to balance all his wonderful male energy. I need a lot of yin also in my life to balance that. So what I've been doing this morning was I went into Wim Hof breathing, which brings you in, in kind of a theta state where you, you get out of your mind, into your body, into your soul. And then I did intuitive writing. I wrote down questions like, what would be the highest most blissful, most blessed thing I can do today? Mm. What would be the highest level to prepare for the interview with Lindsay? How can I be of service in the interview with Lindsay in the best way? And then I would write down intuitively what comes up. And I will do the same tonight. So I want to live within this lovely, wonderful sandwich of being balanced and inspired, and then let this flow into everyday life. I love that. I mean, sometimes <laughs> I call it the bookend. How are you bookending your day? Like, you know, like in the morning, in the evening, you know, connecting to your intuitive guidance before you start your day so that it can guide you through your day, but also at the end of the day, so that when you go to sleep, you're not going to sleep with all the, the doing and the busyness in the mind that you've, you've kind of connected to spirit in your own unique way so that you can go into that restful state feeling held and supported and then you wake up feeling held and supported and you, you amplify that through your practice. And so the rest of the day is fed by that. And then again, at the night you come back to spirit or whatever you have, whatever word that you want to have for that. And then um, take that into sleep and then you wake up and it just becomes this nice, beautiful, positive feedback loop throughout your day. Instead of waking up jumping out of bed feeling, oh my God, I have so much to do. I got to get, get going. I'm running late. And then you have this, and then that amplifies stress throughout the rest of your day. And at the end of the day, you have all this stress and you can't sleep because you went to bed with all this stuff on your mind. And then you wake up tired, stressed because you didn't get good sleep. And then you go again, or might you maybe woke up late. And then, so it's just, you know, how are we, you know, what yummy sandwich are we making for ourselves? <laughs> Is it a pea sandwich or is it like, <laughs> yay. <laughs> yay. And yeah. that's, I mean, that's something to me that's in my feeling, in my 
inner being that's ma the masculine part creating a certain structure so my structure is i do something to bring myself in a good state in the morning and in the evening and in the evening for me it has to be female energy like mm -hmm. this morning i went into wim hof breathing with it which is setting a hormetic stress it's a stress for the body and the system and in the evening i won't do that i want to wim hof breathing in the evening but I will lie in bed and I will maybe listen to some beautiful piano music, mm -hmm. softly playing. I will dim the lights and then I will reread the intuitive um, stuff that I have uh, written this morning. I will just reread it. So I won't force myself tonight in or in general uh, in the evening into some activities, uh, spiritual or psychological activities. But I will soothe myself with a warm shower, with oils and lotions for my body, with soft music, you know, yin. <laughs> beautiful ritual, like a really nice, beautiful ritual to honor the feminine. I love that. Well, Vivica, I really appreciate you being here. And I love how like in, you know, before the show, before we connected, you're like, okay, how can I be a service to all the listeners, even to the attention of this show and to me? And I have to say, like, um, we didn't start recording. Uh, we didn't record the very beginning of the show when I showed up feeling very vulnerable and emotional and you held such beautiful space for me. And you're just incredibly gifted and I love and appreciate you so much. Aww. I look forward to us. Um, doing some more collaborations in the future. So again, yes, if yes. anyone wants to reach out to Vipka or follow her on Instagram, it's um, her handle is at change underscore guide and her website's the same, but it's change dash guide.com. So definitely reach out and um, we'll be in touch soon and sharing more. Okay. Namaste, you beautiful being. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Of course. <laughs>